So we're at the St. John's River this week. It's our first Elite Series of 2022. So we fixed the fishing bass tournament this week. You know, realistically, this is the only, this place is really unique. This is one of the only places that I've ever fished in Florida that's tidal. It's a tidal river system. More typical lakes in Florida are just natural lakes. Big bowls, you know, no current, no tidal movement. And uh, this place is unique it, it, and it very is. It's, it's probably more similar to my home than to most of Florida. We're back in Little Rock for the Bassmaster Elite Series 2022 season, going on 20 years with Tommy Sanders and now Ronnie and Such and the whole crew at JM and Mercer and Davey Hyatt. I can go on and on. It's a strange part of my career now. I used to really stress out and I still, I still do. But to start the season now, you know, I don't know how much longer I'll do this. I don't know if I'll cover the Bassmaster 10 more years or, or this is my last, I don't know. And what, what's weird is I, I want to enjoy the years, you know, the more. I, I used to stress out to the point of uh, I, I was out of control, but I want to enjoy the years. Like last year, I really, really enjoyed it. So we're in Little Rock. We're in Little Rock to, to start the 2022 Bassmaster Elite Series season in studio, downtown Little Rock, and uh, knock out a Kings of Bass. Why not, right? I don't know what my goals are this year, honestly. Like, it's it's funny, last year was kind of like my rookie season and I, I wanted a good, you know, to have a good year and, and make the classic and I accomplished that. I've been real busy this fall and kind of away from fishing a little bit. I haven't really had a chance to really think about my goals and I'm a very goal oriented person, but you know, I, I know I want to do well and do the best I can, of course, but I've not really set any goals for myself yet. So these fish are wanting to spawn. You know, so I mean, there's no other cover here, like there's no grass or anything. So, you know, they're going to spawn up here on these trees, but you know, they're this deep. It's just hard when it's that cold for them to, even if they sit there, it's hard to get them to bite, you know, when it's that cold. Of course, this is, it's great spawning habitat, but this is not great spawning weather. And this time of the year, timing is everything, you know. So I will tell you this, first thing in the morning, typically it's pretty good. And then of course, late in the afternoon, always seems to be uh, seems to be better you know because we're going through a weather change i mean i still may end up fishing stuff during the tournament that i never got a bite on when the conditions got right you know so the deal is with this you know if you make it on to the last couple days of the tournament it's gonna be good it's gonna warm back up you know not get like overly warm but warm enough that this stuff will be more, you know, come more in play than it is now. Uh, this term makes me nervous just because of the way the weather is. And even though I have a good bit of experience on this body of water, I don't have, uh, you know, any cold, cold water experience here. So this will be different. The other thing that's kind of different, it's like, so typically I would know what kind of weight I needed. I have no idea this week, you know, it's going to be so different. Last year when we were here, this was a big deal. You know, those fish were spawning on cypress trees. Uh, there were some caught in this lake and then caught in another lake. And that's how I caught mine. So, but like I said, you know, these trees have a foot of water on them. And like really aggressive when he uh, when he got it. And then the other thing is these fish are Florida strain fish, you know? They just historically don't act very good when uh, you know when it gets this cold. So I expect for it to be pretty tough. Great hacking, having a very solid practice, a very great, great resume here in the St. John's River, but doing something a lot different than we've seen with any other anglers here in the year past. Doing Zona Show and doing the Bassmaster Elite Series, it's, it's two masks. One of them, as much fun as we have on the water in a Zona Show, it's stressful. It's stressful because you're against an hourglass of a budget, and that's, it's my budget. We have big expectations on the Zona Show. We don't want to catch them. We want to knock their ever-loving lights out. There's a decompression 
shooting Zona shows or shooting pro team journals where I don't speak, I don't talk when they're done. My wife knows when I'm done shooting a couple shows, I tend to, I, I lock down for, I say two days, she says like two hours. But in, in all honesty, shooting a Zona show and an Elite Series so close to each other, I have to decompress for about 48 hours and then put my next mask on, which is covering the Bassmaster Elite Series. Let me show you some pathetic, you ready? Do you have any sound? Do you really? For no reason, no reason. What is going on here? I mean, that's a good one. You know what I mean? <laughs> I yeah. don't doubt it. One in particular. We can hear him on camera now. I can promise there was somewhere a Coors party ball involved in that day. <laughs> What's exciting for me this year is, you know, the world's somewhat semi back to normal. You I want to talk more about right, right. that. I do love coming to studio. I love studio at my house. I love doing it from both places. I would say this year, you know, and it goes to last year. A lot of my old friends uh, are back at the Elite Series, from Hackney to Jason Christie to Mike Iaconelli to Peroznik. Those are all a lot of my old buddies. And and you know when when they went off and and, and fished Bass Pro Tour, cool man. Go you know knock yourself out. But man, I, I enjoyed working with my friends, and it's nice that that some of those friends you know I, I get to probably end my career with. Why don't we just dive right into this thing? We have waited long enough. Let's get the season started, the 2022 Bassmaster Elite Series. We are starting again for the fourth year straight. The takeoff is, is underway. The Harris Chain, not only one of the best lakes in Florida right now, really one of the best big bass factories in the entire country. I feel pretty good this morning. I think we're going to end up with a pretty nice day, probably the warmest day we've had all week. And uh, I have no idea what it's going to be like, to be honest with you. You know, we've had so much cloudy, rainy, cold weather, and it is cold this morning. Today is going to be the feeling out process of figuring out, you know, did you practice right? <laughs> I'm still, you know, nervous. I'm pretty fired up about it. I mean, honestly, I'm, I'm ready to get it started. Just get the year started and, you know, see what this year brings. Glad to be back at Bassmaster. Glad to get the year started. Great, great resume here in the St. John's River, but doing something a lot different than we've seen with any other anglers here in year past that we're going to get into here on day number one with Hackney. Started off good this morning. I don't know what happened. It was actually started off better than I expected. I just thought it would be slow and steady, and it seemed like they bit early. And then, uh, I mean, like when I say they were biting, now they were biting, like boiling and stuff. I've never, I hadn't seen all week. And I thought, well, man, this is definitely where you want to start today. And then, I mean, after about nine o'clock, I fished from nine to one and never got a bite. I might, I might have caught two like little bitty ones or something, but and then about one o'clock, I missed a good one. And about 1.15, I lost a good one. I slung it up in the boat. It went out on the rail, slid back off in the water. And then I missed one right after that. And then that was it. That was the only other three bites I got the rest of the day. I don't really have a lot to say. You know, when you have a bad day, you just, it's funny, it knocks the wind out of you. I said he has a track record and you said, I got derailed today, I think. <laughs> Your track record here is so stellar, but I mean, you know how quick things can change here in Florida. And definitely, if today's weather, literally this morning, you know, it was below freezing and it's pretty nice out here now. You know what surprised me? I actually caught the majority of those fish in the first couple hours and I was like, this is wild for them to bite with it that cold. Well, it'll just get better. Well, it deteriorated from there, but uh, it's right. One swing of the hammer here and all of a sudden you get well real quick. And I really thought this afternoon when that sun got high and it's so nice out today compared to what we've had that they would really show up. And I, I see they did for one guy anyway, but uh, I keep my head down tomorrow and hopefully one in big Florida bass show up. Very, very solid first day of the season. Looking forward to more of that tomorrow. We'll see you at 8 Eastern tomorrow morning right here on Bassmaster. Live.
as any tournament that we have in Florida, it's consistency, especially when you catch a big stringer. Every tournament that we have covered together in the state of Florida, protect a big bag. And I think we're gonna see that today, but there's a lot of storylines that we're gonna be able to really dive into here on day number two. We got 94 anglers out there running and all of them with high hopes for today and we know what the what the plan is. Oh, I'm going back to the same place I fished yesterday and just try to see if I can't figure out where I missed them at. I just didn't make the right adjustment. I mean, you can tell that by the weight. I mean, they called them. It's, it's kind of funny because everybody was so scared that the weights were gonna be bad, you know, and they actually are, as good or better than any time I've ever been here. The big thing about most everybody that had a big bag yesterday, they had a six, seven, eight pounder, maybe two, you know, and that was the difference. I'd never, I, I say that I, I missed a couple opportunities yesterday that I know were good ones, but I don't think they were, nothing made me think they were giants. So I dug myself a little hole and today I just got to crawl out of it. I mean, it is what it is. This is not my first time to be in this situation. <laughs> and as bad as I hate to say it, it probably won't be the last. Any thoughts on Greg Hackney? I always have thoughts on Hackney. I always have thoughts on Greg Hackney. Greg Hackney has caught two 10 pounders in, in competition and they both come on the St. John's River. I did not, I don't know how I didn't know that, but I didn't know that. Greg and I, you know, we, we talk a lot. And my thoughts, you know, just talking to him, I think his game plan is he explained what he's gonna do. It's not something that's done a lot in the area he's going to do it when there is a you know a severe front or passing of fronts multiple fronts the thing to do is fish a little bit of depth fish in a little bit deeper water they're affected but they're not as affected in fish that are in eight to ten inches of water in florida those fish are their body gets shocked greg's track record in the state of florida on that body of water on the st john's river is pretty pretty high up there pretty stellar so i look for him to have a good finish I guess this week, instead of kings of bass, it'll be jesters of bass. <laughs> I would consider myself the jester this week. I've had plenty of opportunities today, yesterday, to have had a pretty good event and just, you know, just like this morning. That was a big one I had on when y'all were there this morning. Just kind of stuck the piss out of it. I couldn't pull it out and it just come off. And yesterday I had three in that same area. That was the reason I went back there and started this morning. I had already lost one on a jerk bait before y'all got there and then had that big one in the mat and then had enough, missed another one on a swim jig there. Had a big one wake my swim jig. Had another big one wake my swim jig this afternoon. I don't know, they were weird. So what, what I still kind of, been puzzled by the whole deal because when it was cloudy, rainy, and cold, those I really caught those fish in there, and I've not caught them the last two days. I fished everything in there. I, so I'd never caught a fish off a piece of vegetation in there till the last two days. The place is full of fish, and I, I don't know. I learned a lot, and I hate, it was a painful learning experience. For you, I mean, you do so good here. Yeah, you know, I've had a couple missed opportunities the last couple days, but the fish I found in practice, I don't know. They've swam off somewhere. I guess they used their tails and they, they left. I think they went south where it was warmer. They didn't like the cold weather. <laughs> Is that it? I guess, I don't know. It, uh, I do love this place, though, and I've caught some great big fish here and caught a couple of them in practice, just never uh, never relocated. You know what I mean? Like just, But uh, I do enjoy it. Glad to see all y'all and look forward to coming back forward to seeing you at the Harris chain. It kind of goes back to that deal. I'm at the point in my career where I'm to learn from my mistakes. Yeah, am I disappointed? Yeah, my feelings are hurt. They were hurt yesterday. They're still hurt today. But I, you can't let that bother you because I got to fish again, you know, so this deal's done. It's over with. I worry about what happened here the next time we come back here. One of the best fishermen to ever be on the planet, and he's caught two bass in two days. And I'll promise you, he'll be a factor at the next one because he is really mad. <laughs> I'm disappointed. He's just pissed off. <laughs> I 
I've been at Bassmaster for so long and lived my childhood dream of, of working next to Tommy Sanders, the entire crew. But let's face it, man, the, the Elite Series looks different. It feels different now. And, and I've said this, my last five years of my career have been the most fun that I've had at Bassmaster. A really amazing first two hours and last two yeah. hours. We're going to be with you tomorrow at same time, 8 a.m. Eastern time, but on Fox Sports and the Fox Sports app. Have that for you, that morning coverage for you right here. Four hours worth of it. And also, we'll wrap it up on Bassmaster.com. This is awkward, isn't it? We just got done with day two, Bassmaster Elite Series on St. John's. Long day. Check this out. Get the front seat. Get the front seat. That's confidence right there. We're going to my little sneaky playground. See that bait right there? Oh, that bait, actually, there's a story behind it. I'll tell on the way. Um, but we just got done with studio, and it's really warm. Stand by. Welcome to the gun show, right? I've been like a caged animal doing live today because I knew that we were going to our little sneaky lake that I caught some with Brandon last year, and I just taped there a week ago coming back from Texas, and it was interesting. It was a, lot, a heck of a lot colder than it is right now. Water temps last week were like 38. Sorry. 38. How's that? Good. So I'll tell the story on the way. Let's go fishing. Let's go. We do one private zona show a year, and we were on the way back to Texas. I was down at Whoville and Choke Canyon, shot a good show down there. I didn't feel like shooting a uh, second show on Choke Canyon, so I got the crew and said, hey man, let's just, let's drive up to Mr. Pat's Lake. And here's why, the reason I did that. They'll bite anything, okay? Yeah, we've done it on sexy frogs and cutter worms, and I wanted to tape there when they wouldn't. I wanted to tape there, and what was funny was I taped there last week and all of the ponds around it totally frozen mr pats was frozen around the rim but we launched and the water temp was 36 to 38 and i, I said i want to see how dumb or lack thereof these fish are so long story short this is no joke even though it's to me it's the best lake in the world they're the healthiest the, just the best looking bass the first two hours i could not get a bite on a red eye shad I could not get a bite on a thunder cricket, and I thought, oh crap, I messed up. We should not have challenged these fish. I brought a box of jerk baits, KVD 300s. It's a shallow pond. I thought that, that what they'll do is they'll sag in that ditch. They will absolutely sag in that ditch. And I fished through it, didn't catch them, didn't catch them. I pulled out that jerk bait, and it was like the second cast, toom! Third cast, toom! Toom! And I'm like, Oh gosh, now it has warmed up viciously in the last three days here. Who does nine hours alive and then goes bassing until dark, right? It's not often Bart and I get to fish together. Did you bring more thunder crickets? My man. I know that sounds crazy, but that's a borderline cull in here right now. They're right where they were. Like I'm in heaven right now. You catch bass here that do not look like bass anywhere else in the world, the way that they're fed in here. What the Do you see the one behind him? I, Bart, he got it too. I mean, he got it. <laughs> oh my gosh. So I watched all these fish pretty much grow up since they were kids. Look at you go. <laughs> that could be a big one. It is a big end. It's so great to sneak out of studio for a couple hours and just, just recharge for the last push of the weekend. What's cool is I've learned throughout the years what I need to do to make my mind keep, keep going. You know, I can't just do, I can't do Bassmaster Live and go sit in a hotel room. <laughs> Don't get me wrong, I can get in trouble. If you look on the desk of the Bassmaster, I have a notebook that's always open of notes that I've taken talking to the anglers that we're gonna have on camera that, or the leaders or whoever. I, I take this unconscious amount of notes before every event. I never look at any of the notes. Like I thought about that today. I was sitting there staring at that notebook and I'm like, why in the hell do I actually take notes? Why do I even make calls? I don't look at them. I, I don't know. It, it's a, it, as weird as this is, that little notebook, you could peel through it right now. And if you look at all those pages, those are from the last 12 months. I wrote all of it down. I've never looked at any of it. If you know what it is, it's my blanket, my whoopee. It's there for comfort. 
Actually, that's Tommy Sanders. Gosh, man, I'm the luckiest dude in the world. I get to go bass fishing and talk bass fishing. That's the best. Lucky.